Welcome to Allie's Attic, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is a solo artist, songwriter, composer, and performer who is uh, now living in London. He's recently from, or he used to live in Glasgow, Scotland, or he's from there. Now he lives in London. Um, Wiley Bo Walker. Hi, Wiley. Hi. Good to uh, speak with you. Yes, you as well. It's nice to speak with somebody from Scotland. Both my grandparents are from there. <laughs> Fabulous, it's a fabulous country. Yeah, uh, I've scenery. yeah, I've seen pictures. It's so green. I want to go one day, but I don't know. Anyways, so you're renowned as being diverse and a prolific artist, hailing originally, like I said, from Glasgow, Scotland, and you work with many genres and styles, like blues, gospel, soul, classic R and B, jazz, rock, and Americana. So you are across the board, which is awesome. So basically, tell me when you started getting involved in music to where you are right now. I actually started, uh, well, preschool. Um, so my mom and dad were really into the church. And uh, I started about, when I was four years old, they had these uh, small uh, concerts they used to put on. And I remember, I, I just used to love singing all the time. My mom and dad were both great musicians. And there was always music in the house. My sister was, you know, really into the Beatles and all this kind of stuff back then. And I loved all that. But um, at the church, we did this, I remember this um, this little show we put on, and the, the first two songs I ever sang live were a song called 16, one of them was 16 Tons. It was Mel Travis, an old song that uh, I still perform every now and then in the show. And um, the other song was King of the Road. I um, can't remember who did that, but... Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, it, it, is it Neil Young? Cool. Neil Young? I can't remember. Anyways, go uh, on. I, it, a great, a great old song. Yeah. You know, every, every now and then it, it filters into my head, and it does. It reminds me of my folks, who are sadly no longer with me. Oh. Um, and you know, it's this kind of. That's when I. That's when it all started, and I remember being on stage um, as, as a four or five year old boy, just enjoying it and sort of. Sort of enjoying the applause, we all like to be appreciated. I suppose as a, as a little five year old or a four year old on stage, it was just a wonderful thing. And I said, love singing. And from then on, you know, I signed through primary school, I did all the sort of school concerts. In when I was about 11, however, I met um, a chap called Peter Vitesi. Um, that was in my little hometown, which was Bothell, which was about nine miles outside of Glasgow. And Peter was a great musician. He was just, he could play the piano. He had all this fantastic music thing that he was going on around him. He later went on to play with Jethro Tull, believe it or not. So it was kind of um, good curious. But this was us. It was two, two 11 year old uh, boys thinking we're going to form a band because you know, we love the Beatles and all the, the Stones and all this kind of stuff. So I remember um, learning the foundations, Boom Me Up, Buttercup, and, and doing all <laughs> sorts of <laughs> songs back then, and, and, and just having a great time. And I bought my first bass guitar uh, to form this little band, and, and uh, he was playing piano and keyboards, and it, it, it was just good fun. And his dad owned a hotel in Bottle. Um, we were sort of uh, performing there, and I just, I, I just went from there, you know, I just sort of got the bug for performing and, and singing live. Um, Peter went on, I said, he went to do Jeff fabulous Hartwell. stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I kind of, and he, he moved away with his family, ooh, probably a couple of years after we had that wee band. But I continued, and, uh, you know, like most musicians, you, you form bands with friends, and what have you, garage bands, and what have you. And um, I just never have lost the bug, and, you know, here I am, <laughs> sort of a much, much older. And, and still doing the same thing, just meeting up with people and, and performing music and recording music and, and just having a whale of a time doing it. It's, <laughs> it's just in my blood, it's in my soul. And, um, you know, it's, it's just it's just a good thing. It is kind of it's just a social thing um, and it's creative. And I said, anything that's creative, I, I feel, is, is, is really good for you. Yeah. Um, um, so from there... Um, that was, that was all up in Scotland, Glasgow, and I made forays down to, to London. As a, as a young man, I was always hoping to get signed to one of the major labels, you know, much like young musicians these days, you, you hope to get signed to a major label. Um, unfortunately, you know, on the back of um, 
getting offered publishing contracts with songwriting bits and pieces. The major label thing didn't pan out, but, you know, I didn't let it bother me. I was still performing and I got into various bands in, in London and toured Europe. I've been all over the world playing, actually, and, um, I, you know, came back to the UK and, and, and I've settled more or less in, in London and uh, from then use that as my base. You know, just I just know so many people here that it's, it's kind of easy for me uh, creatively uh, uh, to continue. And with, with the birth of you like us talking on this internet, it's a wonderful thing that the internet is. Um, you know, I work with guys from around the world uh, and there's a, there's a chap that... Uh, I know it's a fantastic musician, a guy called Danny Flam, who produced a couple of albums with, and uh, he comes from New York, and uh, there's a whole lot of um, uh, horn players and, and oh, musicians that he's, int he's introduced me to over there, and uh, as I said, with the benefit of the, the internet, we can be online and we can record, I can record in my studio in, in the UK, or I can go over to the to New York every now and then, but you know, for the for the ease of, of, of getting ideas down, you know, they've got their studios, and you know, it just comes together. So it's opened yet another door of, of sort of to my whole little creative world, uh, my whole little creative universe. And so you know, we've done uh, yeah. So I met Danny actually online. It was kind of he just had the same sort of interest. And this is oh, going back seven, eight, maybe ten years now, um, and. Uh, we both got this love of the 70s, horn-driven, sort of classic R&B, uh, soul um, music. And, uh, you know, I was going down, writing a lot of music along these lines. I had my own band with, you know, an eight-piece band with a, a good horn section, but I was just wanting to up the game. And um, Danny was, working with Danny is just, uh, again, just taught me so much. So we we sort of were working on a whole lot of tracks. Uh, I like the big band thing, and you know, I did a we did an album a few years ago now called While I Go Walk the Danny Plan Big Band, um, and we were sort of just examining. We're sort of looking over the years, sort of from the the forties big bands through the the seventies funk and the the TV theme show type big band productions, and so we did a, an album that. Uh, that went through the decades of, because uh, it's kind of, it's not really listened to so much these days, all on music, I guess, but uh, we, we kind of examined um, how the horn section had changed from the 40s right up to the, you know, the 21st century. And so that was an interest, that was an interesting thing. And it did, it did quite well as, a, as an album. It's kind of, uh, so Danny, <clears throat> with his contacts and all this kind of, so Danny's won Grammys. And, uh, he's worked with people like Kanye West and Eminem, I think, and all sorts. Um, and yeah, so that album from Little Me was considered um, in the Grammys too. And, and we went on um, after that to to work on my solo album, which was Moon Over Indigo, which was released uh, a couple of years ago. So um, that working um, uh, relationship has just continued. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, I've got, I've got lots of other projects that I do as well. You know, kind of, I, I'm always, I'm always juggling sort of ideas, and then, you know, from my solo stuff, I go out with a acoustic guitar and go and sing in people's homes. You know, so that's, that's kind of a, a nice thing as well. You know, so yeah. That's a, you know, doing a little home concerts, fab, doing a huge eighteen piece band on stage is, it's just fabulous too. So it's just kind of. I don't know. I just enjoy it all. <laughs> well, that's good, because you're very good at it. Now, you were talking about Moon Over Indigo. It was also considered for a 2016 Grammy nomination, which is was, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Now, it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing to to be in, in the running, if you like. You know, it's kind of, uh, there's lots of huge names in, in, in the world that are Say um up there at the, the the top of the tree, but for for somebody a small artist like myself to to even be considered, it was a, you know it's a major achievement for me, and I, yeah, I was I was proud for that. And it's, the album itself, I'm, I'm really proud of. Um, it's it's done really well, you know, worldwide, and uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's still you know people talking about it, the reviews and buying it and all sorts so it's just great <laughs> yeah no kidding yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't imagine being nominated <laughs> or winning for that matter now um mm. you have done like i said so much i'm going to talk about some of your achievements because there's a lot of them um you were inducted into the u.s 
Blues Hall of Fame as a master mm-hmm. blues artist in December of 2016. That must have been awesome. That has been uh, absolutely amazing thing for me. Not only is it, it's opened um, a whole new, um, well, it's, it's brought visibility, you know, to my work, really. Um, mm-hmm. And, it, yeah, to be, so having played blues my whole it's not the only thing that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, as you mentioned before, you know, I, I play all styles of music, but to be recognised within a genre and to be inducted into the, the US Blues Hall of Fame was just incredible. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It's just, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Now, you were also a finalist and runner-up in the 2016 Banks Radio Australia Awards for Producer of the Year category for Long Way Mm. to Heaven, the Chicago Gospel Mix. Now, I had mentioned you're also a producer, so you produced. How did that come about? (laughs) uh, It's just, it's a, it's a, a, my whole love of music, it it goes, I love recording, I love getting in the studio and uh, of course, I do all my own stuff. Um, I studied, yeah, I've done sound engineering at, at, at uh, college and I've got my, all my accreditation, all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's a long, long in the past. I've learned so much more since then. Um, and it's just something that I do every now and then. There are artists that um, I like to work with. And uh, I'm actually, um, before we started this uh, interview, I was in, I'm working on another uh artist's album, um, Chat from Scotland. So, you know, that's, that's another thing. So the production side of things is good. You know, it's kind of, it's, um, it is just another path of, of creativity. You know? mm-hmm. And it's, it's certainly when it's somebody else's music and I can, I can add my own um, experience or suggestion to, to perhaps how the, the whole production goes, you know, it's a kind of, yeah, I, I just, I enjoy that whole thing. And it's a bit like um, painting a picture, you know, when, when you produce some music, um, I kind of always look at it as a, as a cinema screen in front of me and, and there are elements of this music that are, that are telling the stories and, and you know, I, I like the big productions I like, you know, to have. A bit like Phil Spector, I guess, in, in the 60s, he would have these massive productions that he would do. Um, probably, you know, 50 people in the room and, and I don't have that kind of um, studio to, to work with but he used to have all these things happening in, in the songs and it's oh, just interesting little avenues and every time you listen to something something else is there and, you know, it just it excites me and, um, yeah, and it was great the the, the, uh, the runner-up in that Banks thing I recognised it was a it was a gospel track that I'd done with, again, Danny Flam um, Long Way to Heaven and uh, a fantastic uh, gospel choir, the Brown Sisters of Chicago got involved in that and uh, it was recorded and their, 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 their um, backing vocals or their choir was recorded in, in Chicago. It's just a phenomenal thing to, to work, to, to voice, to do my lead vocal in front of a you know, gospel choir. It's just, you know, it's just another experience that's out of this world. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess it would be. Yeah. I don't yeah. sing, so. <laughs> but yeah, and I I love watching when there is somebody singing and a gospel comes in, uh, like they walk onto stage singing. I just think it's beautiful. It gives a whole different sound to everything. Absolutely, it's not something that I do a lot of. It's just it's, it's but it, it, the song warranted it, um, and it was just yeah another great experience. So and that's what I think is key. I kind of listen to the song, and I think, well, how is this? going to be best um, produced. How is it, what is this song doing? And, and, and the song with the title, like Long Way to Heaven, it kind of, it, it screams gospel at you. And, and just the way, it was one of these songs that I wrote, I think I wrote it and, you know, it just came to you. You know, it's kind of, it just comes. Mm-hmm. There, there's the song. But, um, and I, it, it was, it's been in my, you know, I've been playing it as a solo artist and what have you for a long, long time. But I'd always had this, inkling that this should have this huge gospel choir and then and you know the opportunity presented itself and we went for it and yeah it's it's been um it's been quite well received i think so yeah it's nice to, yeah, it was nice as i said to, to have the uh, production uh thing you know the, the uh producer yeah 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 no that was that was great so. And you were also a finalist and runner-up in the 2016 British Blues Award in the Kevin Thorpe Award for Songwriter category. 
<laughs> you wear yeah. lots of hats. <laughs> this, 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 yeah, I've been nominated a few times in, in the British Blues Awards. And, um, you know, these are the people that you're up against are, are, are major artists, and well, that one is major UK artists who are signed to big labels and all this kind of stuff. So it was, it was a real honour. Uh, the, the, the two times that I've um, come in as, as runner up, you know, I'm, I'm runner up to sort of superstar so it's kind of yeah and songwriting it, it's been a it's, a it's a key thing for me it's it's the way i um it's a diary of my life kind of thing it's it's kind of i've done it all my life and it's it's probably one of the, the key important things for me uh, is, is songwriting uh, and to be recognized uh, you know by the jury of my peers um, fantastic yeah so I, well, and like you were saying, Long Way to Heaven was also a runner-up in the 2015 mm -hmm. British Blues Awards. And also, um, I'm going to just do all the Blues Awards. <laughs> um, there was also a runner-up in the Blues Awards on Severn FM in the Best Studio Album of 2015 category for A Long Way from Heaven. Yes. So A Long Way from Heaven has done a lot for you, which is awesome. But also, number one for Christmas 2015 with <laughs> Who Do You Love? It's a New York chiller mix. In the Netherlands hit tracks top 100 charts. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of everybody, <laughs> everybody wants a Christmas number one, don't they? It's kind of, <laughs> that, that was just, uh, that was a thrill. That was, that was really thrilling to see. It's, you know, um, that was a track, it's one of the tracks of Moon Over and Nigel. Um, the, the album had done well in Europe, and uh, to see it sort of one of those tracks, the single track off this album. Hit the top of the charts. Well, you know that was a good Christmas for me. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Well, yeah. and you also had like Moon Over Indigo and Stone Cold Beautiful both achieved CD of the Week status in the prestigious European and based hit tracks top one hundred. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they're, you know they're they're um yeah. They're, why does this thing happen? I don't know. It's kind of like, I just produce my music and it goes out there. And, you know, I'm fortunate and and recent years to the people who've um, started to listen. And, and both those albums you mentioned, Stone Cold Beautiful, Moon Over and Over, are worlds apart. Stone Cold Beautiful is a, is a guitar-led album. It's, it's a, basically, it's a, a three-piece band, um, guitar, bass, and drums. You know, it's kind of and, and me doing my vocals in the top. Um, telling stories, though, it's kind of, it's all down to the storytelling of, of the songs. Uh, whereas Moon Over Indigo is this, this huge production with the, the horn sections, backing singers, and all this kind of stuff. Going on. So they're, they're, they are worlds apart. The key thing, the, the, the link between the two is the, the songwriting, you know. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, when you start out, and I guess key for um, uh, every sort of young musician um, is just hone your craft for your, your songwriting. It, it's kind of, you know, so, uh, some people just have it, you know, here on your show and, and, and you know, other, other shows that, there are, there are people out there who've got so, so much talent and they've, they've, they've just got it. And other guys and girls are sort of about, they have to, you know, they maybe get a bit more attention um, for whatever reason. But for me, perhaps, they haven't honed quite uh, their songwriting skills. And and over the years, what I've seen with that is, is some of the um, some of the people, some of the musicians that have... have um, uh, Sean Brightly, I guess, at a certain point in their career, haven't succeeded over the longer period because they hadn't set set their time and hadn't looked at their skills. You know, they're obviously very talented to have been noticed in the first place, but I think songwriting is key and, and, and just honing that, putting it in front of a live audience and, and then you, know, you get feedback from that and, um, you know, just hone your craft. And, you know, you know it's, I just think it's a, it's a fundamental. But, um, you know, I, I, there are, as I said, listen to your show and, and tons of other shows out there that are so, so many great songwriters out there. It's yeah. Yeah. And I had a songwriter come on because it just boggles my mind how you can write a hit song or you can write a song that relates to something that happened to you in your life. It just, I, yeah, I love songwriters to me are just gold. Um, and I was going to ask you what advice you could give any new artists, but you already did that, hone your craft, I, which is great I advice. Think, uh, hone, hone your craft, getting out there and, and playing, you know, um, 
you know, I just love playing. You know, as I said, I, I do small house concerts, and and that's great fun because you're you're there with the audience and uh, the small the small gigs, small theatres that I do. It's kind of it's an intimate thing. Um, you can't make it. There's, there's nothing as um, you are totally exposed when you're on stage. You've got an acoustic guitar and your voice, and that's it. And you've got a theatre for people watching you. Know, it's kind of that's quite uh, humbling, really. Um, and but it does. You, you do learn your craft from from doing those kind of gigs. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you know, as, as um, you know, starting now, it, it is just getting out, having the fun of going out on stage. There's nothing quite like it. Enjoy that. But you sort of keeping your eye on the, the, the long term, own your craft, think about the song and, you know, think about how people um, relate to it, the songs that you actually uh, put together. And uh, as you say, you know, it's kind of, it's gold when a songwriter can, can uh, take a little bit of their life, put it in a song and you can relate to that. You know, mm-hmm. you can, like, kind of just spreads, you know, the world loves that. It's kind of, there's just something about it. It's just a great skill to have. Yeah, it is. It's an amazing skill. Um, now, in 2017, what we are going to see from you is you're going to be working on a new trilogy of albums. And I love this. This is so Scottish. <laughs> Based around stories, tales, and drunken fables. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. There's, there's, um, there's always a story at a bar, you know. There's this kind of, <laughs> you pick up all these, these uh, story, play, all the gigs that I play, you know, there's always people telling you bits and pieces or you, you get into it scrapes adventures yourself you know and that's yeah and it's just it just feeds feeds the muse and uh gives you a bit of um i don't know a bit of inspiration for for writing some new stuff so yeah there the couple of years and yeah let the mind go <laughs> i just I, there's I, nothing wrong, nothing no wrong i love that <laughs> um now you're also currently producing the music and soundtrack album for wiley bow walker presents the rattlin bone theater show and it's a theatre production that will open at a mm. London theatre in 2018. Yes, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's um, I did have a, an album out a few years ago called Rattle and Bone, uh, The Life and Death of Rattle and Bone. Um, and I took that on tour, went across Europe, and uh, it was an 18-piece band. We had um, clowns, fire eaters, and jugglers, and all sorts of stuff on stage. So it was a very festival band type thing. A real Nolan's feel to it, a real uh, street marching band. There's a sort of a trombone army within this this whole thing. And it went down so well. Um, I've been developing it. And there's a, a theatre in London that we're going to put on um, the stage show. So it's, it's going to be sideshow artists, the music, the sort of the, uh, the, the, the southern and the Nolan's kind of, you know, marching band music. But... Uh, a lot of it is sing along, uh, getting the audience involved. Um, stuff like the, the aforementioned "16 Tons" is a, is, a, is a track that we do, and everybody knows "16 Tons." We all sang that as kids. And the, the audience, you know, whenever I, I play that live, the audience sings along. It's kind of so, so it's great. So um, yeah, so this this is a it's kind of um, it, it's not a gig per se. It's actually going to be a theatre production. So it's something. Else, it's kind of just it's a tangent to, to to what I've been doing, and uh, when I go on stage, if I'm with the big with the big band, I'm quite a theatrical performer anyway. So it's just it's just another step forward uh, or, or step sideways for me. And it's going to be a lot of fun too, I think. Yeah, it uh, sounds like yeah. it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to have it all so it be filmed and it'll be on uh, YouTube and all that kind of stuff. You know. Oh, good. When, an experience for the world so they can see see what I get up to. <laughs> yeah, it'll be amazing to watch. Um, and you're also going to be touring with the Wiley Bo Walker Band as well as gigging um, your one-man blues swamp and stomp show, Welcome to Voodooville. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I, yeah, I said I do, I do that uh, from either acoustic or I take my electric and I've got a stomp box and, I, and sort of do this um, sort of deep southern um, stomping blues, which... Um, yeah, kind of works and, and, and tell stories and just make an evening of it. But uh, yeah, I've got a, a, a lot of the Wiley Walker Band is a four piece band and um, great players in it. And it's just it's a, a, an easy band to take on, you know, a tour or do some gigs with because uh, it, to organise you know the big bands, the eighteen piece thing is is a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of uh, 
with all the Spains getting people to the gigs and, and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. But to take a four piece band, the uh, Walker band is, is is kind of easier. It's kind of and, and it's kind of I can play the smaller venues with it. And, uh, it's just it's just an easy thing to to do. Well. And I urge everybody to go to your YouTube channel. You watching you on stage is just amazing. You just blow me away. I love watching you, <laughs> and um, I can't wait till the production, the theater production comes on YouTube because that will be amazing to watch. Um, so, what two songs are we going to hear from you, Wiley? Okay, uh, I think um, I want to know is uh, one of the tracks that uh, has, has done very very well for me. Kind of, um, that's really well. Spotify just is, Spotify is a, one of these things that is a bit of a um, uh, barometer. I use it as a barometer to see what songs are being listened to, and I want to know is 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 one of those. And the other track uh, I'd like to play for you is Drive. Um, again, that's that's another song that um, it just seems to have touched people's um, whatever psyches. They they just seem to really enjoy it. It's not beat. Uh, a bit of fun, really. So, um, but yeah, hope, hope your audience enjoys it, too. Oh, they will. <laughs> I do. I, it's just amazing. And um, now you can purchase your music anywhere you can purchase music online nowadays. Um, so I'm urging everybody to go out and purchase your music because it is. It's just great. And it's like just a spectrum of everything. And it's you're just you're a great entertainer. Um and your website will be up on my website so people can also go there check you out and um purchase whatever they want from there but i urge everybody go and watch wiley on youtube (laughs) it is so worth it he's just great um so thank you for taking the time out of your i mean i know you're busy and i appreciate that you you know took some time out to come on my show i'm hoping in a while i can maybe convince you to come on Wednesday nights to uh, a new show that I've got going on where people are performing live, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, I won't, I won't get you. I won't make you say on air that you're going to do it. <laughs> um, so I thank you so much for coming on my show. Congratulations for the house of blues. Um, that's how I found you. And I think it's just a great, great honor and you deserve it. So thank you so thank much, you. Wiley. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Yes, you as well. And thank you for joining me on Ali's Attic. Keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. Cheers. <laughs>